broadcasting from the city of sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean and Boca Raton, Florida. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to my ChadDeckard.com podcast show. My shows will cover how online and offline marketing and communications can grow your business as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurism, and travel and adventure. Thank you for tuning into my show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. If you like my show and find it resourceful, please do others and myself a favor by sharing, posting, leaving a comment and subscribing to my show i greatly appreciate your support and efforts and now let's get down to this week's business this show is a part of a series of 11 shows covering 10 innovative ways to make your marketing more strategic and effective with limited resources time and money and bad economic times Let's go back and refresh our memory on the 10 innovative ways that we are going to be covering in these series of shows. Some of the past shows that we've already covered so far are number one, find your ideal prospect. Number two, what makes your business different than your competition? Number three is develop a core message that addresses your ideal prospect's needs. Number four is use the ADA, that's A-I-D-A formula in your sales letters and direct response material. Number five is total internet presence. Number six is referral marketing. Number seven is connect with the media. Number eight is create a sales system. Number nine is schedule your marketing. And number 10 is set the stage so that your employees know what is happening and why. So today's show that we are now up to number five on the subject matter of total internet presence. And in today's show, um, I'm going to cover two specific segments. Uh, the first one I'm going to cover is seven essential stages of building a total online presence. And then after that overview at 80,000 feet, I'm going to kind of drill down on how to create a total online presence when you really don't have the time. And not only that, the second part of this uh, segmented program, I'm going to post the article that supports all the questions and has all the links that you'll need to follow this plan in order to uh, get some of this stuff up and going so that you have total online presence. So I really help you out here. So this is a very valuable show. So you might want to go to my website, see Decker.com. That's C D E C K A R D.com and look for episode. I would say this is say 16. Look for the episode on total online presence. I don't know exactly when I'm recording this program right now what episode this really is. It's probably most likely maybe 18, 19. Uh, but it's definitely in that area. Look for total online presence. Click that and you'll go to the page where not only the YouTube version of this uh, program is presented, but there is an entire slew of information and links below the program that will be very helpful as we walk through this show. So let's go ahead and get started on how to create total online presence. So to begin with, there are seven essential stages of building a total online presence. And there are many moving parts involved in marketing. And the online elements increase importance with each passing day. But marketing is a system. And to effectively operate this system, you must assemble and integrate each of the important parts into something that looks like a whole. Your online presence is your key to success no matter what your business sells. No matter if all of your transactions are done face to face, no matter if you don't see a way to get a return from your Facebook page, no matter if you've never bought an online ad, the key, however, is to build a total online presence, much like you would a tall, sturdy building. By constructing floor by floor in a specific order or in stages, your stages may differ just a bit based on where you are today and you'll surely come back and revisit. Add on and revamp each stage as you grow. But I believe the following model is the surest view to view your online marketing as a system. Below, or actually during this show, I'm going to discuss seven stages of building a total online presence. 
And I want to give uh, total credit to uh, the outline and the research that I did on this show that pertains to the greater show and give credit to a fellow named John Jantash. And John, Tanta John T Jantash, sorry, John, uh, runs a website called ducttapemarketing.com. And he also has a podcast. And uh, I find uh, it a, a great resource uh, of getting some really awesome information. So I want to give uh, credit where it's due in getting my thoughts and my information organized in a great manner. So John runs a, 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 the podcast as well as a seminar on this subject matter, which you can get that information by visiting my website, cdecker.com, and checking out this show like I mentioned earlier in the show. So let's dive into the uh, nitty-gritty of the seven stages. The first one is a content platform. So much of what happens online revolves around content. It's how you get found. It's why people pay attention and how you start to in exchange value. Without a content platform to build from, a great deal of effort in other stages will totally be wasted. To me, the content platform starts with building a listening station with tools like Google Alerts, TweetDebt, Tracker, Social Mention, Sprout Social, and Radian 6. All those are all linked up on my site once again when you visit this show. From this point, you can gain insight into your market, your competitors and important groups such as key journalists and while starting the work of better understanding your most important keyword phrases. Keywords are like chapters in your total body of content and your, should be part of your plan. Doing research using tools such as Google Keyword Tool or Word Tracker on the most important ways to show up when people search for a business like yours and creating blog posts around these chapters using editorial calendar approach is how you fortify your content platform. Once you start consistently creating content, you can provide valuable ebooks that will be the pivotal element of your email lead capture stage. There's really very little reason to play this game if you don't put the effort in at this stage. Okay, the next one is organic SEO. Having someone type a search phrase that is key to your business and finding a blog post or page from your site on page, one of the results is the ultimate payoff in long term. It may be the difference between success and failure. Search engine optimization can be the complex and time consuming, but most businesses can generate significant results without making it so if you simply focus on the following three elements. Number one, produce keyword rich educational content. We covered this above uh, and earlier in this, uh, this program, but searches engines live on blog posts and other educational content. So use a tool like Scribe from Copyblogger to help you write more search engine friendly content. Once again, Scribe from Copyblogger, the link is on my site at cdecker.com. Make it number two is make it easy on the search engines. Make the on page elements such as your blog titles, your URLs, your alt image attributes, subtitles, and internal links work for you and use XML sitemats that make it easy for search engines to grab your latest. Check out Search Engine News for great primer. Once again, that link is on my page, cdecker.com, for this particular program. All right, number three is draw lots of links naturally from other sites. Simply writing great content will start this process, but so will writing guest posts, uploading content to places like YouTube and SlideShare, making thoughtful comments on other blogs, submitting online press releases, and amplifying your content in social markets. All right, the next... The next uh, I would say a uh, stage that's really important once you've kind of got your keywords and your SEO going is email marketing. And that's how I actually started in online marketing way back in 1996. An engaged email list is eager to hear from you and is the most valuable asset you can build. 1,000 responsive email followers trumps 25,000 Twitter followers every day when it comes to actually promoting the things that make you money. Focus on building a list of email subscribers that want to hear from you and your social media will become a tool set to help you do more of that. Choose an email service provider ESP such as Constant Contact, GetResponse, 
Aweber, MailChimp, or Infusionsoft and go to work on building email capture forms with the offer of your free ebook or weekly newsletter before you move on to social media. So email marketing is very important. That's how I started the list. The money is in the list and the fact that you're able to follow up over and over and over again to be able to sell more products is just a fantastic strategy. And none of that, it's, 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 it's necessary because you know, someone will say, hey, you know, I've got a million hits to my website last month. Well, so, do you know uh, who visited you? Did anybody leave their name and number or how to contact them to get them to come back again? Because it doesn't matter really how many hits, um, unless, you know, obviously it makes a lot of money for you. But at the end of the day, wouldn't you want to, if you're already spending the money or you've made all the effort to get people to your website, don't you want to know who's visiting your website? and? give them a, a means to be able to leave with some type of value once they've uh, visited your website that will allow you to keep the conversation and build the relationship uh, over time and in the coming weeks that eventually you know may lead to a conversion well that is very important so don't overlook email marketing and if you need help with email marketing feel free to uh, contact me um, you know on my website through the contact form and uh, that's been my specialty is email marketing and besides the you know, four, uh, Constant Contact, Get Response, Aweber, MailChimp, or Infusion Shops, five. There are other email marketing systems that are more robust. Not only are you looking to build an email list, but I happen to actually be a database aggregator. And I basically bring in somewhere between 10 million records from over 700 different domain URLs online and manage that data. And my primary job or what pays my bills uh, on a daily basis besides other projects that I work on is routing that data to people who have uh, SMS uh, message engines that text or direct mailers or telemarketers or email marketers and I route these specific leads that I that are generated through these hundreds or thousands of sites that I manage that come into me um, you know by the second, by the hour, by the day, and I reroute those to people who are interested in monetizing, and they either buy the a certain amount of data on a per record basis, or a flat fee, or they pay on a, a rev share, depending on the different arrangements that uh, you know I set up with whoever I'm working with. So let's move on to the next uh, point, and that is social media marketing. This is certainly an area where you should consider strategy before tactics. The first step is to understand how your current customers are using social media and how you can use social media to somehow serve them better. If you do that, you'll get immediate value. Create Twitter lists of customers and add their social profiles to your CRM tool. Add a tool like R Reportive to your email. Uh, once again, that link to Reportative is on the uh, on my website for this show. Then claim and build your profiles on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, YouTube, Picasa, SlideShare, and uh, Pinterest. Your plan to work and engage prospects in all these networks may not be clear yet, but the first step is to claim the free real estate so that you can start exploring. Once you start to share content, build connections, Reshare other people's content and discover best practices in each individual network. You can begin to amplify your content and start finding ways to drive prospects to your ebook and newsletter in an attempt to start a relationship headed towards a conversion. All right, the next category that we uh, for total online presence is online advertising. Many people waste advertising and and then conclude it doesn't work. Pay per click advertising can be very effective when done right. One of my favorite things about it is that a platform like Google AdWords allows you to test your thinking a dollar at a time. Here's my take on how to make ads pay. Use your ads to drive content awareness instead of simply to sell. Drive Facebook users to sign up for your ebook first, and then you can sell them over and over again. The basics of PPC are this. Use lots of punchy, dramatic ad copy, but test, revise, and test again. Create tightly focused ad groups with highly relevant ad copy and work negative keywords out of your list. Test some more and then test some more and then test some more. <laughs> well, mobile and location is the next subject matter. So mobile is more of a behavior than a tool. 
The first step is to analyze what behaviors your customers are exhibiting before you dive into or dismiss Foursquare or text messaging. I can assure you this, however, your customers are reading content, searching for things to buy, and using reviews to make decisions on mobile devices. Claim your location based on profiles and places such as Foursquare and Yelp. Create mobile and tablet-friendly viewing options with tools such as WP Touch, Techora, or GoMobi. Start creating mobile-specific ads, landing pages, coupons, and offers that take advantage of the growing use of mobile devices as a major part of the purchasing process. So, the next subject matter is analytics and conversion. Like many stage-based processes, there is a cyclical aspect as well. For some, creating benchmarks and key performance indicators is really the first step. So, you're one of those folks that you can start here because no matter where you are in the process of this stage, we'll always revolve. Many people can't start the process of measuring success until they are measuring in real time or can't start the process of tweaking and testing until all the elements are in place. As you build and make certain that you install tracking code from a tools such as Google Analytics or Spring Metrics or KISS Metrics so that you can begin to build the data to test and refine from. Then you can start building conversion goals, funnels, and events, tracking your ads and split testing your landing pages and opt-in pages and sales pages to discover ways to increase conversion. Even something as overwhelming and complex as the changing face of marketing online just gets a bit more manageable, I think, when you start to view it as a system. So start viewing everything that you do as a system and be consistent. So I've just now covered the seven essential stages of building total online presence, which are, right, once again, from the top, content platform, organic SEO, email marketing, social media marketing, online advertising, mobile and location, analytics and conversion. And now I'm going to head into the second part of this program and that's how to create a total online presence when you really don't have the time because you know us CEOs are just so busy obviously running all aspects and putting hat, all different hats on throughout our days and weeks and months in order to run our business. So as your, mark, as your marketing your business online continues to evolve it's become essential to look at how you view your online presence in a global integrated and strategic manner. From this view, I believe that you can gain the greatest coverage with the least amount of chasing your tail. I believe there's a bit of a hierarchy to what must be done first and by adhering to this loose order, you'll always know what comes next. Do you add Pinterest to the mix? Well, the answer depends greatly on what else you've accomplished and as there may be higher priorities for you right now, but by following the plan of action below, or what I'm about to present to you, you can also maximize your precious time and resources by focusing on the highest payoff activities online rather than chasing the idea of the week. And I've covered this before about random acts of marketing in previous shows and, you know, what is your, your goal, you know, as far as what you want to accomplish because not all social networks are created equal and not all social networks would be relative to what it is that you know you're marketing so you need to sit down and kind of get a little bit of an understanding of all the different social networks and, and and basically how they would relate to benefiting your business you know in a short and medium long term because not all of them are going to serve the purpose for what it is that you are selling so it doesn't make sense i mean you know, say LinkedIn probably wouldn't be the greatest place to advertise your your pizza restaurant uh, because there's people globally all over the world. Yeah, there are some local, but it's just not probably as conducive as say maybe Twitter or uh, Facebook or Pinterest. You know, so I'm not going to dive into a great you know detail about how to do everything that you need to do. But in keeping with the theme of time, I'm going to provide a quick list or you know, on my website, like I told you, by going to cdecker.com, of action steps that you can take um, as a checklist or a to-do list to follow in order to achieve your goals. 
Each section contains one-time actions and actions that you need to return to as part of your daily, weekly, or monthly marketing routine. So, first thing is, listen before you speak. I like to set this aspect up first because I think it provides immediate payoff and lasting benefit for decision making. Okay, one. And like I said, within these points, uh, I do have links. So you do want to go to my uh, website in order to uh, follow up and see where I'm taking you with this. So number one, create a Google alert for key brand, industry, client, and competitive terms. Number two, Create Twitter lists for clients, competitors, and key media contacts. Number three, create Google Reader account and find 25 industry-related blogs to follow. If customers or competitors blog, add them to the folder. Number four, investigate social settings in your CRM and add you know, reportative to your email. Number five is investigate social tools such as TweetDeck, Hootsuite, or Sprout Social to help monitor mentions. And number six is a bonus, add paid options like Radian 6 or Tracker for deeper listening metrics. All right, well, the, uh, the next uh, subject I'd like to cover on this is optimize online content. One of the most important ways to be found online is through search. This only happens if you write content and create pages that match what your ideal clients are looking for online. This includes local search. Number one, ask at least 10 customers to tell you what search terms they use looking for businesses like yours. Number two, employ a keyword tool like Google's keyword tool or the free or paid version of Word Tracker to dig up lots of potential keyword phrases related to your business. Number three, create a list of either two, well, I say create a list of either 10 major themes that will be the basis of your content and work with that. And then number four, start or restart a blog and commit to addressing your themes and actual customer questions three to five times a week. Of course, I recommend WordPress when you do this. Um, I don't. I usually try to put th at least three different types of uh, informational uh, articles or podcasts or um, I'd say picture graphics out there uh, a week in order to keep feeding the demand of uh, you know my listeners and my readers and followers of my uh, blog. Uh, and this keeps people engaged. Uh, so hopefully there's something every week for somebody uh, and I can get the most eyeballs and at least keep in the mindset of uh, building the relationship with my list. And so the next one is share every blog post on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, and StumbleUpon. And uh, fortunately, that's all automated when you work with WordPress and you install certain um, plugins that uh, tie into Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, you know, uh, Aweber, uh, what do you call it? Mailchimp, and, and, and a lot of other uh, email marketing programs and uh, different social sites. And also, the last point is make two to three minute video overview of your post and submit to YouTube. Uh, it definitely helps to be able to put something that is very personal out there, uh, and YouTube allows you to be able to do that. Uh, not only on YouTube, but you can post and embed the video uh, on your you know, blog or you can share it within your Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn. It allows you to be able to almost have like uh, a personal touch uh, and people are more engaging to something that where you're standing up and you're actually being a real person than hiding behind some sign and becoming some corporate rep representation message uh, out there it's just not as personal as uh, yourself in engaging uh, readers or clients or subscribers or whatever it is that you're chasing um, my next point that I'd like to make is claim your real estate one of the biggest ways to help in the game of being found is to be in lots of places even if you're not sure your business is ready to spend significant time engaging in specific social network you should make the time to claim and build strong profiles and a place and optimize content and brand assets in these outposts alright number one is to create and build 
out profiles in LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Google. Number two, create and build out profiles in Picasa, Flickr, YouTube, and SlideShare. Number three, add plugins to your blog and web pages that makes all of your content shareable in social networks. Number four, start sharing your blog posts on social networks. Number five, start uploading and describing images, slide presentations, and videos. Number six, share five blog posts from your Google Reader on Twitter each day. Number well, the next one is join five active groups on LinkedIn and connect with people in each of those groups. Let me tell you, LinkedIn groups are awesome. I can't tell you how easy it is to get leads and traffic and business off of LinkedIn groups. I basically call it a watering hole, and it's just a matter of what kind of uh, content bait that I can put in there that will attract somebody to what it is that I want to attract them to. So uh, don't overlook what that one. I find that one very powerful. And the next one is find 25 Facebook pages related to your business and like them all. And the next one is put all of your customers you can find in a Google Plus circle. All right. The next one is claim your Google Places page on Google Plus local. And the next one would be claim your business location on Foursquare, Twitter, Yelp, and Facebook. And as a bonus to this as far as claiming your real estate check out no m that's k n o w e m and get hundreds of social profiles built automatically once again that link to know them is on cdecker.com in relations to this podcast show all right the next subject is capture and segment visits one of my primary goals of your content, or one of your primary goals of your content, should be link building and social networking activity. And this is to attract interest in a long-term trusting relationship that you'll build with interested potential clients. Once someone decides that they want to click over and read your blog post, you want to capture some information in an effort to build an email list for more education and eventual promotion. Find and sign up for an email service provider, and I can re recommend a few. Once again, you go to my site, and I've got links to various uh, email marketing uh, systems that I would highly recommend in order to accomplish this. My next point is create a reason someone would want to give you their email, ebook draw, perhaps from a collection of your best blog posts, or a great place. It's probably a great place to start, or if you have an ebook. Or simply a small report that's, uh, you know, a really good piece of information. One way to, if you can't figure out how to, uh, or what to use, or how to, you know, create one, the best way to do is to kind of take a look at maybe your competitors or what other people are doing in order to get people to opt in their list. I mean, you see it just about anywhere with anybody who really knows what they're doing. So take a look closely at this, uh, you know, squeeze page or or uh, landing or, or basically uh, was it opt-in form and see what it is about it that creates value and gets people to obviously opt in and uh, build a list. So the next point that I'd like to make is um, use the chosen ESPs form creation tools to put a sign up form on every page. So. You want to have your your opt-in form on every page of your website so that you can give every opportunity for someone who comes in from all different directions, which people do based on content, to be able to subscribe to your mailing list. So don't you know, make it easy for them, and they will more likely join your list than uh, trying to look around and find where it is that they need to sign up if they want to be on your list or not. All right, consider a plugin such as Pippity to, and that's P I P P I T Y, to highlight your email offer through a pop up function. People will tell you they hate pop ups, but smart pop ups increase silence by two or three hundred percent. So uh, do it anyway. And uh, create a weekly or monthly email newsletter with the best information that you've collected through your own reading each month. All right, my next subject or my next point is to create an autoresponder series to your ESP's tool for each product or service. So, in your website, 
You just don't want to have maybe one way to get on a list. You can have a centralized list, but you should take advantage of multiple autoresponders in order to segment and drill down on specific interests of uh, ways to uh, be on your list. So say you're selling um, one particular, say it's a seminar course. You don't want to be mixing people who are interested in the seminar course with, say, a piece of software that helps, um, you know, doing something totally else. Because maybe someone who maybe already joined the course um, doesn't, you know, maybe doesn't have, like, say, the the knowledge of another product, say, of the of the software, and. Uh, you know, if you're if you're marketing the software messages to them, it might not be relative, and vice versa. Uh, and maybe you you're trying to upgrade them into the software. That's fine, but uh, you know, everybody who joins your list uh, joins the list with a particular mindset or perspective. So you can't speak to everybody the same across the board. So you wouldn't speak to somebody who's interested in your say your seminar the same way you'd speak with someone who's interested say in a hard product like say a, a piece of software uh, your message is completely different so you need multiple autoresponders and then from that with some of these autoresponder techniques technologies you can combine everybody into a single list and speak to them as a whole and offer all your products at once but uh, your messages should be specific based on your products and services and my next point would be to integrate landing pages once you have your social profile set up and you're producing um, new content and starting to make offers online and advertising and through social media, it's time to look into creating landing pages that drive people to specific information and personalized calls to action. Number one, create a landing page for your ebook or newsletter that sells the sign up. Number two, create landing pages for each product or service that offers your autoresponder more information series. I use the WordPress plugin uh, premise uh, on several of my sites. So you, once again, the link is on my, uh, my, uh, my website, cdecker.com. And my next point is consider creating welcome landing pages for your LinkedIn, Google, and Facebook profiles. Next point would be look into tools such as Unbounce and Optimizely to create and track versions of pages for testing. My next point is play ratings and reviews. Love them or hate them, search engines and surfers alike put a great deal of importance on the presence of and quality of reviews. Sign up for and claim profiles on Yelp, City Search, Google Plus, Local, Bing Local, and Yahoo Local. Next point, subscribe to the RSS feeds of your profiles on Google Reader so that you can get noticed with a new review when a new year review appears. And my last point is bonus. Pick one or two local review sites and start actively promoting reviews. This is done one-to-one -one when you get a testimonial or compliment, not via mass email. All right. The next point that we, you want to have in your total online presence is go online and drive offline. So that means now that you have traffic, content, social working for you, it's time to add some features to make it easier for people to interact or even go offline to meet or buy. Number one, create an offline call to action such as free visit, coupon, or even evaluation. Number two, consider adding clicking to call chat schedule to make it easier for people to engage and get help and take action on your website. Number three, create Google AdWords account and start driving traffic to your call to action. And the bonus number four is create a local LinkedIn or Facebook group around the topic related to your industry and start building interests with a goal of taking the group offline as well as through a tool like Meetup. And Meetup is great to be able to form a local base a community in your area so of people who are like-minded. And so I will proceed to the next uh, and final uh, part of this uh, podcast, and that is analyze and test. Actually, while this step comes last, it's really the beginning. Because after you set everything in motion, you must create the ability to see what's working and what's not so that you can make adjustments. Okay, number one, you should subscribe to uh, Occam's Razor blog by Avish Nash 
Kashik. <laughs> That's really hard to say, and I'm sorry if I said it wrong, but once again, you can get Akamen's Razor uh, to get to that blog. The link is on uh, cdecker.com for this particular uh, podcast post. So uh, go ahead and look that up. The next point is create a Google Analytics account and install the tracking code on your site. Number three, create a list of core actions to track. Things like newsletter signups, information requests, video views, or social shares. Number four, if you are running Google AdWords, make sure you add conversion codes so that you can track what ads are getting the best desired results. And I have number five is consider using goals and analytics to track conversion funnels and paths. And number six is create A B test of your newsletter sign up page and Google Analytics content experiments function and start learning how to optimize your pages based on results. And the final seven is number, it's a bonus, so consider adding more robust tracking tools such as Spring Metrics, Omniture, or Kiss Metrics to your site and all the things that you do revolving around it. So, how many things on this list can you check off? How much do you still need to understand and do? Well, that's about it. This was a super long show, probably my longest that I've ever done. So for those of you who've made it this far throughout the show, I really appreciate you hanging in there and getting this far. And I really appreciate uh, uh, all the feedback and everything that I get from everyone. So I really would like to get some feedback in regards to this show and what you think. You know, if you like my show, please consider subscribing to it, which you can do by visiting my website, chaddecker.com. Or if you are an iTunes or Stitcher listener, take it with you wherever you go on your mobile device. I invite you to give the rest of the listeners and myself all the feedback that you can contribute or support because you are part of what makes this show a success. So please click your share and like button for this audio or video version of this show on your social networks like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or your blog. I really appreciate you doing so. Well, that's it about for now for this show. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. This is Chad Deckard signing off. Goodbye for now. <laughs>